In the age of social media censorship, questioning whether or not the Earth is a globe has been deemed harmful thought. But why is this? We seem to be conditioned to think that the issue has been scientifically settled. But this is not the case. Our most popular scientists recognize that the geocentric model, where the Earth is at the center of the universe, is observably accurate. Edwin Hubble and Stephen Hawking went as far as to say that they reject the geocentric model not based on scientific reasoning, but rather because they find the thought of being at the center of the universe to be emotionally disturbing. Physicist George Ellis stated that you cannot disprove the geocentric model. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. The Michelson-Morley experiment in the 1880s proved the Earth was stationary. And Albert Einstein claimed this was a serious embarrassment and intended to disprove it with his relativity theory, but later admitted that he had failed to do so. We are conditioned to think that the heliocentric model is scientifically superior to the geocentric model. But when we apply scientific reasoning, we discover that this is not true. Contrary to popular thought, the scientific community has disputed the heliocentric model for centuries, such as the Earth's curvature. According to the heliocentric Earth model, the Earth is 24,000 miles in circumference, and if one were standing at sea level, they should only be able to see less than three miles before the surface of the Earth curves out of view. But this has been proven to be false for centuries, from the Bedford Level experiments of 1838 to modern photography. This photograph of Chicago was taken almost 60 miles away from Grand Mere State Park in Michigan. On a spherical Earth, this would be impossible. Using the Pythagorean theorem and the current dimensions of the Earth, the top of the tallest skyscraper should be 900 feet below the observable horizon. Local news explained this anomaly by claiming the image was a mirage. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage. They claimed that somehow light refraction and perfect weather conditions are responsible for creating a photorealistic mirage of the Chicago skyline appearing to sit on the flat horizon from almost 60 miles away. Anomalies in the Earth's curvature can also be found in old lighthouses, able to be seen for several miles past what is possible on the heliocentric model, and weapons guidance systems that are capable of sighting targets that would only be possible on a flat plane. We are accustomed to observing ships disappearing over the curve, but with modern consumer cameras, we can observe that this seems to be an optical illusion based on light reflection and the laws of perspective. Many of us tend to think the planet is too big to observe curvature, but the empirical evidence tells us that either the surface of the Earth is a flat plane or the planet is at least 100 times bigger than we are told. Another very intriguing argument for flat earthers is Antarctica the mysterious massive continent at our southern pole that nobody is allowed to explore. After sailing over 60,000 miles along the Antarctic coastline, Captain Cook was never able to complete the journey around the ice continent, which is supposed to be just under 12,000 miles around. Neither was James Clark Ross or the British ship Challenger. Nobody has ever successfully circumnavigated Antarctica. Many so-called flat earthers claim that these attempts failed because Antarctica is actually a massive ice barrier that surrounds the flat surface of the Earth. The azimuthal equidescent projection map produced by the U.S. Geological Survey has been used for centuries for the fact that all directions or azimuths are correct and all distances are at true scale. 
Studying this map, one can clearly see how man has been able to accurately circumnavigate the Earth on a flat plane model. And if it is in fact accurate, then it explains why after 60,000 miles, nobody has been able to completely circumnavigate Antarctica. Interestingly, this is also the map used by the United Nations. Admiral Richard Byrd, Medal of Honor winner, youngest admiral in the history of the Navy, and recipient of three ticker tape parades in his honor, led four expeditions to Antarctica. The fourth being a military operation known as Operation High Jump, with an aircraft carrier group, 4,700 men, 13 support ships, and 33 aircraft. Their stated mission was to establish the Antarctic research base Little America 4, but many believe the true nature of the secret mission was to root out the Nazis who arrived in 1939, claiming New Schwabia and setting up a Nazi presence in Antarctica. In 1954, Admiral Richard Byrd spoke on TV of an area bigger than the United States with valuable resources and announced a future of international exploration. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. Strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. We've found enough of coal within 180 miles of the South Pole in a great uh, ridge of mountains that's not covered with snow, enough to supply the whole world for quite a while. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, well, do you hope to see that? I do. <laughs> So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be a number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. But this never happened. In 1957, Admiral Byrd died in his sleep of a heart ailment at the age of 68. And on December 1st, 1959, all 12 countries active in Antarctica signed a United Nations treaty that outlawed all public travel south of the 60th Southern Parallel. This was the same time that NASA was formed. The world's attention was pulled away from exploring Antarctica and directed firmly on the moon. In 1962, a series of high altitude nuclear tests was carried out by the United States. It was called Operation Fishbowl, which has caught the curiosity of many flat earth researchers because the flat earth model shared by the ancients was one where we lived within a sphere, upon a flat surface, and surrounded by a massive dome, like a fishbowl, or the Truman Show. In 2012, the secret lost diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd was published, wherein Admiral Byrd allegedly claimed to enter a hollow earth through a hole in the center of Antarctica and meet with an advanced alien civilization. The diary provides no evidence of being authentic, and many would suggest that it portrays the distinguished admiral as a crackpot and strange tales of Antarctica as fantasy. To this day, the public is strictly prohibited from traveling below the 60th Southern Parallel. Nobody has ever completely circumnavigated Antarctica, and airplanes are prohibited from flying over the icy continent. What are they hiding? There is now talk of investing trillions of dollars to explore Mars. Why not Antarctica? If sharing videos about flat Earth is harmful, why not put it all to rest? by circumnavigating Antarctica, documenting everything, and prove that the Earth is a spinning globe. For Infowars.com, this is Greg Reese. Infowars, tomorrow's news, today. 
It's Paul Joseph Watson with Summit.News and Action 7 News. We're here in Hong Kong. This is Savannah Hernandez for Infowars.com. I'm reporting to you from Hong Kong, where I'm joined by reporter Greg Reese for the next week. This is Greg Reese for Infowars.com in Hong Kong. Our recent trip to Hong Kong was a new achievement for Infowars.com. Despite being the most banned broadcast in the free world, we continue to win because of our great, strong, loyal audience. We have Dan Lyman covering InfoWars Europe, Paul Joseph Watson in the UK, Millie Weaver and Caitlin Bennett in the American Heartland, and from Austin, Texas, a team of reporters and crew ready to be dispatched wherever the story is going down. We are not done winning, and with your support, we will keep winning. We have to keep winning. We have to win more. Go to InfoWarsStore.com. You have gone to InfoWarsStore.com and gotten books and films and supplements and T-shirts and water filtration, air filtration, and things you need.